All right. For this video, we're going to learn how to use West Point Bridge Builder to design your bridge. Uh, you'll later be making that bridge using a handheld 3D printer. Okay. First, with every project, you want to do some research. Okay, I have here the just Google um, truss design. Okay, so bridge truss design. And um, you can see there's all these different styles of uh, bridge designs. Uh, the, the computer program that we're going to be using only has like three different types. Um, but there's lots more out there. Okay, so they have like the Pratt truss on there and a couple others, but uh, and the Warren, and then another one. So, but there's all these other ones like the K truss and uh, this Baltimore truss that they don't have on the program, but you can still do these. Um, so it's really good to go through here and just look at all these things, okay? And, and, and look for things that might help you out. Um, like these pictures here that show um, how stresses um, appear in a bridge right here, okay? And there's this one right here. It says the outer segments of the truss are the first to break. So maybe you should make these pieces here stronger, okay? Anyway, so do a little bit of research, figure out which one do you want to make, and then um, uh, go, go to it, okay? Or you can even make a, a couple different ones on the program and then decide which one you want to make in real life, all right? So let's go ahead and get the program going. Um, so let's see, it's called West Point Bridge Builder. So just type in bridge. I don't think it has the word West in it. So type in bridge. Um, just BRI will, will find it for you. If you don't have it installed, I have the installation in Canvas. So you can even install it at home. So I'll open it up. And here it is. It'll have the tip of the day, which is just little things that help you out with the program. You don't have to read all these, but if you want to look through them and to see if it helps you, that's fine. Um, close it out when you're ready. If you're starting, you'll just leave it here. Um, if you've started, saved it, and want to restart, uh, you know, continue on, then say load existing bridge file. All right, so we'll just say okay, because we're starting a new one. I want you to fast forward to step three, and I want you to come down two notches. Okay, so we're at the 16 meter mark. Don't touch anything else. And then go ahead and go on to the end. Um, well, actually, number five. Um, here, here's where you have those three choices, okay? So go ahead and pick one of these for now because they'll kind of help you out. Um, but then you could always um, ignore the pattern and then choose your own thing to do. But these will, these will get you going at least at first, okay? If you want to also type in your name here, um, you can do that. You don't have to, though. And anyway, when you're done with that, um, then just say finish. Okay, so what we have here is um, the bridge and it already defaults to making joints which i'm doing right now so you want to just kind of follow the pattern again you can change it later but if this is your first time using it you know just go ahead and follow the pattern and uh, draw the bridge it, what i'm using now is called the member tool you click you drag you let go okay click drag let go and just fill in all these designs here all right so now we have a bridge and it defaulted to you know a solid bar and 140 by 140 um, you know millimeters so it's kind of how big everything is uh, so this is assuming it's a, a very big bridge and uh, we'll scale it down when we 3d print it anyway so once you're done just just make it right off the bat like that and then we're going to drive a truck across and it usually will break which it did and that picture was right it breaks on the outside first right um so it broke here it broke here and then it also broke in the middle as well kind of an interesting to see how it broke um okay to make this whole process easier i want um i want everybody to use um hollow bars or hollow tubes so i want everybody to you know just draw a box around your entire bridge and switch to hollow tube 
okay? Um, this will make it so that we can make everything, you know, it's usually what they use anyway. So hollow tubes and just make them big. And so what we're going to do now is look at it. You'll see that it actually made it weaker because they're hollow, but the same size. And so um, what I want you to do is pick the ones that did not break and make them smaller until they break. I want this entire bridge to be, you know, about ready to just fall apart. And it's, it looks like it makes, makes it out of spaghetti. Okay, so we're getting to the point now where they're all breaking. Now, why are some of these red and some of these blue? Well, that's because the ones in red are breaking in compression. So all these ones are being smashed to death, while all the blue ones are being pulled apart. Notice how the ones on top are in compression, while most of the ones on bottom are in tension. Same thing happens with your finger when you push down on it. The bottom of your finger is getting pulled apart, the skin there, but the top is being smashed together. So that's what's happening in the bridge. We already did math as a class showing that the forces in the bridge um, are different throughout it, depending on you know what, what angle it's at and how it's how it's um, trying to fight the, the load that's on it. Okay. Anyway, so. But the whole point in doing this right now, making it so small that it just breaks everywhere, is so you can optimize it, okay? So I have these two left. Those seem to be ones that don't need to be the strongest. All right, so drive it, come back. And now everything's breaking, okay? So this bridge will completely fail everywhere. So what I'm gonna do now is highlight the entire bridge and make it one step bigger. And then we'll drive the truck, come back. Now, every time you change anything with these two buttons here, the, the big one makes them bigger, the small one makes them smaller. Anytime you do that, you'll notice that these numbers over here become gray, which means um, it needs to recalculate the math. So. What I'm going to do is highlight those, then I'm going to hold down control on the keyboard and highlight those, and then highlight those. So anything that's breaking and make it bigger. Drive to truck, come back, it's redone the math. So I'm going to hold down control and click those, click those, this one, all those, and that one, because the rest of them have broken. Basically, if the number goes over one, it's broken. What this is is basically a percentage of uh, the force to strength ratio. Um, so basically, 90, that's like it's holding 96% of what it can hold. This one's holding 101%. So this one is just barely breaking. Um, so we just make it one step bigger. See, so that's number 23. We're going to make it bigger. And then see how they went gray? So we got to click this and then come back. If you want to watch the bridge fail, you can. That's fine. Um, but anyway, so 23 is now at 77%. So making that one step bigger made it um, sh stronger. Therefore, it's holding the same amount of force, but it's stronger. So therefore, the force to strength ratio is now at 77. You want to get these as close to one without going over. Um, but, but as soon as you go over, you got to come back down. So if, even if it's as low as 77, sometimes you, you can't get any higher without going over. It's kind of like playing the prices right. All right. Anyway, so um, only saved one that time or a couple. All right. So make the rest bigger and just keep doing this process. And it seems like it would take a while, but it doesn't doesn't really take that long to finish this part. All right, so I didn't save anything that time. Uh, maybe I didn't click the button, okay. I'll save that one, make it bigger. And oh, look at this, we're getting even better, all right.
sometimes making them bigger makes ma making them bigger makes the bridge heavier. So one that didn't break uh, might start breaking again. Just re-highlight it and uh, keep going here. All right, there's that one. Those two, that one. Make them bigger. Uh, the truck. Let's let's actually watch it this time. And there we go. Oh, still breaking. Almost fell in the river. What's cool about this um, version right here is you can actually um, like hop in the truck and like fall to your death. <laughs> anyway, um, or you can you can um, you can come over. You can fly in here and 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 watch it fall down. So anyway, um, don't play with these too much, but they're they're kind of fun. If you don't have these buttons, um, if you have, if yours looks like this, um, you can you can fix it by um, going here, going to test, test, and say use old style graphics. It just switches back and forth between the two. Anyway, all right. So I'm going to highlight those three. Looks like they're just barely over. So this should be the last time. That I need to push that button. Voila. Now we have a bridge. Oh, wow. It broke. Ha. Uh -huh. Here we go. That one. Again, I mean, you can make it just barely heavier. So there we go. All right. Now, what I really want you guys to look at is the fact that some of these are smaller than others. So when you manufacture your bridge with your pen, you want to make these pieces bigger and these pieces smaller. Okay. Otherwise you're putting material in places that doesn't matter. Okay. Or that doesn't need it as much. So instead of making everything all the same size, like it did at the beginning, you want to optimize your bridge to make it so that it is uh, the best size for every single part of your bridge. Okay, now um, let me show you how to change it a little bit. Let's say you wanted to do a different design. Um, I'll show you a couple of designs that I've done. Um, let me make this bigger here. So this is called a Bailey truss. It's not one of the options in this program, but you could easily modify it to look like that. Um, let's see, that's the uh, a Warren arch. So basically, I could easily turn um, this bridge into an arch by just, you know, moving these up like this. And then doing like, like that. So now we have basically an arch. And you could also click and kind of nudge it with the arrow keys. And also these three buttons right here, you can change these to give you smaller increments of movement. Because when I had it clicked on this one, you see how it jump, jumps a lot. So it's easier it's easier to move things with the arrow keys or to turn that on. And then you have a much uh, finer adjustments to make it look more like an arch. Okay. And you can see I, you still have the pattern in the background. And you can turn that off and on with that button right there. So if you decide to just ignore the pattern after you made the bridge, that's fine. But if you change your bridge shape, it'll completely change your numbers and you have to go through that optimization again, which is not hard. That's just time consuming. Um, basically, what I've done is I didn't change anything as far as um, the size of each beam, but by changing the shape, now can I make any of them smaller? Oh. That I can. I can make some of these smaller by making it an arch. So you can optimize the shape as well. Okay. Anyway, so um, keep that in mind that you can try different things. <clears throat> Let's say you optimize a bridge, save it, and then go back in and change the shape and optimize it again. So you have a bunch of different bridges to look at, like I have here. So basically, what I did was I made a bunch of different arches, uh, bridges. And I can look at the, at the costs down here to kind of look at which one is the most efficient. 
to build. Okay. Anyway, um, so you saw the Bailey. Here's the Warren Arch. Um, here's just the regular Warren. And here's a uh, How or Howie. I'm not sure how they pronounce it. Um, it's basically the one that I just did. And that's a Pratt. We have, this is called K-Truss, which is kind of cool. And then this one's awesome as well. That's called a Baltimore Truss. Okay. Now, you can look at some of these bridges that have been made in another video that I made um, called um, Crushing My Students' Hopes and Dreams in Slow Motion with Sad Piano Music, um, where you can see actual bridges that have been printed and being broken so you can see um, how they were built and how, are they, how they were designed and how they break so that you can make your bridges better than theirs. Um, engineers learn from each other's mistakes, so it's okay to look at them. All right, now one last thing is how to print off that design that I just showed you. All right, so once you're done and it's all optimized, I'm not gonna take the time to optimize this one because I've already shown you how to do it, but I wanna show you how to print. Okay, so if you go to print, The most important part is that you need to go to page setup and change it to landscape. Okay, when you change it to landscape, that makes it so, and my light turned off, hold on. Okay, that makes it so that the bridge is sideways on the paper, not, you know, so it just makes it so we have bigger bridges when, when we print them out on the paper. All right, so you're gonna, then you'll just hit print, make sure that the printer, has my room number in it, 504, okay? So page setup, landscape, make sure it says 504, and you say print, okay? Um, yeah, anyway, so, and what you can do, is you can do, let's see, you can do two copies and you can give me one, or you can take a picture of the one that you print off to save paper, okay, and then turn it in on a canvas. So either either way works, all right? All right, so we're just gonna print that, and then I'll have one to show of what I did. Anyway, um, that's basically it. I'll do another video showing the actual process of printing it, all right? Hope you enjoyed. And we gotta turn this off now. Not that one, this one.